Greetings, my name is Neo Second, and welcome back to my Let's Play of Crimson Grey Dusk and Dawn. Now, in the last episode, courtesy of a uh, horrific incident that occurred within a somewhat distant town where a young where a young girl went on a murder spree, it looks as though the, the incident that in question is being used by uh, big pharma companies like Koitec to uh, push their own lobbying groups to decrease the amount of regulation that is put on big pharma companies regarding their testing of new medications, and they're going to use this to get, well, less testing done on their products and get their own and get them onto the onto the market faster. All just so, so they all with the promise of, uh, well, keep, keeping another uh, incident like that from occurring. They're basically using they're basically using the the panic that the, the incident has inspired here to uh, push their own agendas. And well, I, speaking for myself, I think it's a very fucking bad idea. I mean, we're talking about uh, thing. We're talking about uh, medications that are supposed to uh, alter people's brain chem uh, chemistries and thought processes in some way or another. Here, you should not. I think you should have a good amount of regulation on that sort of thing here, because if something goes wrong, then, well, you're going to get an incident like uh, the, the one I, that happened in the last episode regardless. Actually, I think it was the episode before, but point, point, my point still stands. So, yeah, it looks like, yeah, it looks like as though we might be heading into a situation where everybody is doped on something. All because of this one incident. Oh, and in our news, Lizzie found out about uh, John's uh, surprise wedding plans for the both of them, and they are um, trying to stay focused on that, while you know being keeping a cautious eye on what's going on with uh, Koitec and the other big pharma companies. And I think that pretty much covers everything, honestly. So, we're, I might as well just go ahead and continue on where we left off and see what happens with either one of these two things. My money is that uh, Big Pharma is going to make a big move before uh, Lizzie and John can even purchase a wedding dress, but we'll see. For the next several weeks, Lizzie was overjoyed. Even handling the minor details of the event was wonderful, to say nothing of the major ones. It all seemed to pass in a by in a rush but she relished it and tried to capture every detail in her mind. The old woman who made her dress wasn't so bad and helped Lizzie fill in the details of her vague fantasies. She loved what she saw, though given the schedule, she wouldn't see the finished dress until her wedding day. Ain't that unfortunate. Getting their rings turned out to be simpler, just a visit to a jeweler's and a wait. The rings were a perfect match except for the size. Until the wedding, they held the other's ring. Lizzie found herself clutching her hands often, smiling to herself. Focused on the wedding, Lizzie paid little attention to the news. It didn't matter. All that mattered was the two of them. Until one day when that wasn't true anymore. Okay. Okay, I see the skip buttons here. And... Yeah, looks like I need to uh, make some different choices along the way, kind of like what I predicted at the end of the last episode. I think my best bet of getting something significantly different is to, tra is to train to prepare for arrival at this point, so that's what I'm going to select. There might be others. Lizzie picked up her knife and gripped it tightly, considered getting up and going for her axe. I need to be ready. Lizzie, slow down and think about this. We're nowhere near anywhere that something like this, like this happened. No, John. What this shows is that we don't know how many of them there are, and they could be anywhere. And if any of them see, see you, they'll try to steal you. I can't let that happen. I need to be ready. John didn't stop her, understanding what she needed. 
The situation might not be what he wanted, but he understood that it was necessary for them to prepare. She got her axe and began swinging it experimentally. It wasn't quite the same as it, had, as it had once been. There was a flicker of slowness from all the happiness in her life. She needed to regain that speed without losing any of the happiness. Practicing with her blade only made her think more about the potential threat. Not today, not tomorrow, but it would come. Lizzie ended up practicing long into the night. Don't forget your studies now. As she fell asleep, Lizzie tried to ponder what this would mean for them. All she was sure about was that she wanted to face it at his side. Okay, let's skip ahead. So now back at this thing. Let's try confronting John about it again. I guess that wasn't the right set of decisions either. Let's try forgetting about it for now. We need a break. The full story will probably be up tomorrow, so there's no sense wearing ourselves out over it now. You're probably right, Lizzie. I was getting tired of that news graphic anyway. John turned off the television and returned to her, and she happily slid into his lap and lay against his chest. They spent the rest of the night just quietly talking, staying close while they worked. John hadn't been too upset about the incident but she was happy to take his mind off of the serious subject for a little while. Letting the matter go made Lizzie anxious, though. I'm feeling anxious because I feel like, because I'm starting to think that I might have to redo the whole game here. But we'll see. She didn't bite her finger while he was watching, but her mind began to cycle through plans and possibilities. She fell asleep. Um, let it go. Yeah, this isn't working. Okay, so here's what I'm thinking I'm going to do for now. I'm going to uh, make choices that look like as though they'd be the blatantly wrong ones for now and see if maybe, just maybe, somewhere along the way, one of them will actually turn out to be the right one I need to take. So, to begin with, let's kill the track team just to be safe. She actually took a step toward them, hand moving into a weapon. But no, she didn't need to do that anymore. But for a moment, she had wanted to. Fully intended to. Lizzie had to take a deep breath and focus to turn away from that choice. Okay, nothing here. I guess one other thing I can try doing is uh, being less honest and direct about the relationship and see what happens there. So, let's ask indirectly. John, have you ever been approached by a couple? He blinked at that pulling back to look at her face more clearly. Approached by a couple. I mean, there are uh, uh, people in the other apartments, of course. We talk sometimes. But they haven't asked you to do anything social? Not since they asked everyone to that, black, that block party that didn't actually happen. What's this about? It's nothing. Lizzie, is there something you're upset about? I'm just being paranoid. Well, you're finally being honest. It's nothing to worry about, John. Lizzie kissed him quickly, pleased to see the puzzled look on his face. Of course, he would never even dream of doing something that would hurt her, even if he was approached by awful people. Okay, that's it for that. Reluctantly, Lizzie pulled herself away, chewing on one finger. John might be mentally healthy, but he still needed protection. Her mind flashed back to the track team and the other threats on campus. 
she would make sure that nothing could interfere with their love. And let's skip. Let's investigate the track team. Looks like I'm getting. Looks like this is leading me towards something. Realizing that she had higher priorities, Lizzie sat about considering her options. The track team was definitely the place to start, but she needed to consider her options carefully. Making her way to the track, Lizzie reconsidered the situation rationally. Obviously not the entire track team was guilty, and some of them might be suspicious, but wouldn't be able to touch John. To touch John. The best way through this was via targeted strikes. After watching for long enough, Lizzie knew exactly who she needed to remove. There was an attractive blonde girl who stretched unnecessarily between runs to show off her assets, and her eyes wandered. Yes, it would be best to start with her. Well, come on Lizzie, maybe she won't find John attractive. But you wouldn't really uh, take that as a positive, wouldn't you? Because how dare anyone not find your John attractive? Heads I win, tails you lose, is kind of what I'm getting from this here. You're screwed no matter what. <laughs> it would have been immensely satisfying to isolate her and take care of her directly, ideally with an axe in hand. But that would be difficult to hide, and she needed to preserve their life together. For several days, Lizzie skipped some of her classes, watching the girls' schedule. She had a car she kept in the east parking lot and frequently drove out of town. It seemed she wasn't particu a particularly careful driver and didn't wear a seatbelt either, so it would be easy to set everything up. The only problem with cutting her brake lines was that the girl would notice while backing out. That wouldn't do at all. Considering this problem, Lizzie acquired gloves, checked her cameras, and made other preparations. Lizzie? Is everything okay? No, but... I'm not going to tell you that. Lizzie abruptly realized that she had been scribbling her plans at home, in front of him. John didn't look suspicious, because he trusted her, but he knew something was wrong. She felt a surge of love that he knew her so well, but she realized that she had made a mistake letting him see. She needed to hide everything deep inside her, at least until she could remove the problem. Everything's fine, John. There have just been some mean girls in class who have really upset me lately. I see. You can always talk to me, Lizzie. You know that, right? Of course! But she couldn't talk to him about this. Not about that horrible girl. No, she needed to take care of this herself. To protect them. Lizzie gave John her sweetest smile. She could be stronger than this, swallow the stress and show him all, only all the love she had to offer. Then he wouldn't be so sad, and she could eliminate the problem, and they could be, have happy college days together. A week later, she had her opportunity. A sporting event filled the eastern parking lot, making her target park on the side, on the side street where there would be no need to break. Lizzie hummed romantically to herself as she drained the brake fluid, disabled the emergency brake, and manipulated the pedal until it felt natural. I'm sorry, unknown blonde cheerleader girl, track team girl, excuse me. Where'd I get cheerleading? I don't know. Then she retreated to a safe distance and watched as everything went according to plan. The crass was less dramatic than she expected, but it was enough. She was certain of it, even though she had to restrain herself from going to check. Because that might have cast suspicion on her, and she couldn't let anything ruin her relationship. But things were better now. The terrible girl was gone, and John wouldn't notice anything, and she could love him forever. Now there was nothing left to do but make happy college memories. She meant unlocked, protecting him. That's not a blondie. What are you talking about? And it looks like I got the picture broken again.
At least it's something. Okay. Lizzie gripped her forehead with both hands, forcing the thought away. She didn't need to do that anymore. Let's go meet him at the computer lab. Flowing to the old cabinet in the corner of the room, Lizzie opened it and looked over her collection. She selected her axe, of course, and took another knife to complement the one she always carried. Yes, this felt better. More certain what she needed to do now, the stress melted away. Her world narrowed down to a single focus as she left, locked the door, and headed toward the lab. There were other people on, uh, on her way, but they didn't exist for her. No physical threats, no relevant factors. Eventually she reached the building that held a computer lab, where, where less well-off students like them had to go. She slid around to this, a side entrance, just in case, then walked inward toward where she hoped he would be. Hello, Aaron. At least I think that's Aaron. You don't have your glasses. Finally, she spied him, trying to collect his things, but talking to another student. A boy. Someone he worked with at the library. Lizzie knew his name. Not a threat. She breathed a sigh of relief and leaned back against the wall beside the door to the lab. There was a simple explanation as to why he was late, as she had known there would be but it was still comforting to watch him. Lizzie slid a hand to into her purse and caressed the shaft of her axe while she waited. John finally exited, and though he looked surprised to see her for a moment, after that he smiled. Lizzie, sorry, am I that late? No, I just had to see you. She greeted him with a hug and a, ki and a quick kiss, then pulled back. John, let's go back home. Sure, I'm finished now. But is everything completely alright? You've seemed more nervous recently. It's just stress, I think. I wish we had more time together. I know. I wish things could be different, too. But after this semester... She listened eagerly as he kept talking, soaking up every word. There had been a bit of, a, of tension in his voice at the beginning, but she realized guiltily that she might be adding to his stress, but it slowly melted away as they spoke. By the time they neared the apartment, things were back to normal. Lizzie gave him another smile. I bought some things, but I haven't gotten started. Do you want to make dinner together? Here's not your apartment. Sure, that sounds nice. I'm starved, so early is good. There you are. John said about helping her with the preparations. They didn't have a lot to do, but even if they were just eating ramen, Lizzie wanted to give it her. Lizzie said about cutting up the vegetables, removing the bad portions and reducing the best to appetizing chunks. Her knife flickered satisfyingly perfectly balanced for her hand. They might need to do they, they, excuse me, they might need to make do in many ways, but she had excellent kitchen knives to work with. Even when money was tight, he had never suggested selling her her knife collection. She would have though, would have gladly sold every knife and every single thing she owned for his sake. Okay, this looks the same. Can I select no? Lizzie shook her head briefly, forcing out the strange thought. Of course she wanted to have sex. I guess I have no choice. No choice at all. His name over and over again in increasingly scratchy letters. Oh. Writing his name, are we? Wild fragments of thoughts connecting conspiracies. Lists of women who had gone close to him. 
She wondered what John would think if he read this and decided it was better not to burden him. It was sadder than usual, she realized. Perhaps because of the stress of work, since he was covering more shifts. Lizzie res resolved that, he would, that she would try to even harder to lift him up, make him as happy as he deserved to be. Okay, I'm making... Hmm. Eliminate everyone in the room. Defend John with knives. Retreat, gather weapons, and monitor the situation. Let's eliminate everyone in the room. Lizzie? His voice sounded sli uh, slightly pained, which broke Lizzie's heart. She couldn't add to his depression. She couldn't. The idea of participating wasn't unpleasant, but it would be so much calmer and more wonderful alone at home. Lizzie looked up, smiled, and made her decision. Let him participate, but keep him safe. I can handle everything at home, John. You can have fun here. But I wasn't thinking that way. You don't have to. No, no, it's fine. I'll have everything ready for you when you get back. She left a quick kiss and maintained her cheerful pace until she was out of sight. Then doubled back around, her hand slipping into her purse to feel the cool handle of her axe. Jumping to catch a fire escape, Lizzie pulled herself up and moved to the top of the administration building, then waited by the edge. As expected, John eventually emerged with a group of other students, carrying flyers as discussed. Using her vantage point, Lizzie watched them carefully as they posted the flyers around campus. Why were they sticking together in small clusters? It didn't make sense, and it would be more efficient to go alone, but they all seemed to be laughing and enjoying themselves. Laughing, laughing and enjoying yourself with other people that's not Lizzie. This is definitely not a good thing to be doing, but, well, I gotta make progress somehow. As they got further into campus, Lizzie slipped it back down and tailed them. No girls tried to get too, clo too close to John, but they were having too much fun for her liking. For you, I think you'd be I think it would be perfectly acceptable if nobody if no girls ever had fun around John, period. Cause girls having fun around John just seems to be like cap a capital offense in your eyes. And honestly it really is. Worse, John didn't didn't even seem to be enjoying himself as he sometimes could with crowds. His expression is slightly distant as if troubled by something. Maybe because he knows that you're probably thinking of doing something drastic. Were they bothering him? Were they, were they like his old, awful friends? Lizzie clenched the handle of her axe tightly, but decided that there was no need to act. Instead, she needed to keep her promise to have everything ready for him. After staring at him for a while longer, Lizzie headed out to make dinner and clean. She got everything done, and John seemed glad to, to see her when he got back. But while she had waited, Lizzie had several pages to her notebook. They had spent quite a lot of time helping with the preparations, Lizzie always following John to make sure nothing bad could happen. She had enjoyed the extra time watching him and it seems like John was very invested in the upcoming event. Okay. Has someone done something to make you feel bad? If they did, I, Lizzie, it'll be okay, really. You don't need to check on me. I can handle myself. Lizzie nodded and smiled, but his words spent, sent her into a spiral of concern. Had he noticed her? Wouldn't be surprised. John might have normal senses, but he'd gotten very good at noticing her presence. If so, then it was possible that she may ha had made his problem worse by watching him. 
Lizzie began running over every minute, every minute action, reanalyzing it with this new information. Let's be quietly supportive. Lizzie decided that it was her turn to carry him. She doted on him for the rest of the evening, getting everything he needed, eating with him when he got hungry, and staying close. When they finally went to sleep, she held him gently, glad to see some of the tension finally easing from his face. He actually fell asleep beside her in a way that he had hadn't in some time. She mean unlocked, supportive. Once he was asleep, Lizzie let herself stare at him without trying to do, trying to hide anything in her gaze, drinking him in. This was her John. She had to protect him. Okay. Let's kill her. For a moment, her will coalesced and Lizzie was utterly certain that she needed to kill the girl. Her fingers twitched, preparing. Go through with it. Memories of John floated into her mind, bringing her a peaceful calm. Lizzie gave the girl a gentle smile. I'm sorry you feel that way but I really don't think it's your place to judge our relationship. But this is... I'm going on to get on with my life now. You get on with yours. Lizzie gave her another smile and departed as swiftly as possible, a skip in her step. There was no question that the girl needed to be disposed of. The only question was what way would be most appropriate. That meant she needed to choose her methods, which Lizzie found rather rather pleasant. As nice as it might be to remove her directly, Lizzie decided that it would be best to remove her with poison. While it wouldn't be effortless to gather the necessary supplies without arousing suspicion, she had access to many resources on campus. It wouldn't be hard. Not at all. Lizzie still made sure to do everything right, telling the girl over several days to learn her schedule and determine potential problems. She was shockingly casual about leaving drinks lying around her dorm room, so the only issue was getting in and out unseen. Well, isn't that convenient for you? When the day finally came, it was disappointingly easy. Lizzie was so happy to hear the news that it was easy to pretend to be upset. Everything was perfect now. But when she got home, she found John sitting on the couch with a somber expression on his face. He probably knows what you did. Lizzie rushed up to him immediately. John, what's wrong? Did you hear about the girl who died? Yes. I don't really care about her, but I can pretend to be sad. Don't worry. She said it lightly, trying to draw a smile from him, but John remained somber. Lizzie, do you still get the urge to kill people? You know I do. But you don't think I would actually kill someone, do you? Especially not an innocent girl. That's the thing, Lizzie. I don't. Li innocent doesn't exactly exist in your world. That's good. I really do love you the way you are, but sometimes I worry that I... Stuck your dick in crazy? Repeatedly? Despite having every opportunity to get the fuck away from it? We know, John. We know. Please don't worry, John. Everything's fine now. We're safe. There's no need to kill anyone. <laughs> I guess I'm just being paranoid. You keep telling yourself that. There was a smile she wanted from him. Lizzie happily went to embrace him, gripping him as tightly as she could. It had been true. There was no more need to kill anyone. The threat was gone, 
and she was at peace again, and John wouldn't notice anything, and she could love him forever. Now there was nothing left to do but make happy college memories. Achievement unlocked, defending him. I'm going to go over the achievements list on Steam real fast here so I can get an idea of how much progress I've made. Okay, uh, going over what three I have left to unlock, there is a true ending that I have to get, and a scene possibly involving me having fun with John in the library, and I'm assuming that what that means is it's a scene I can only see if I have adult content enabled, so, and, well, I don't think, yeah, I, I can't really do that, I'm afraid. So that's probably going to be an achievement I'm going to have to undoubtedly unlock off camera. And another, and another similar looking one involving uh, breaking wedding traditions and what have you. So I guess at this point all I really need to focus on is just trying to get past the first point in the story that I've gone so far. And just figuring out exactly what combination of choices all throughout I need to take in order to get to that point. So I guess I'll just keep on chipping away at it. Let's take care of it for you. Actually, John, let me take care of this for you. Huh? They need someone to run the flyers, right? I can do that quick. You go home and relax. I... Okay. Thanks for helping, Lizzie. He lingered a while longer, but she urged him to head home. John needed some time alone, some alone time after all. And if there had been moments when they couldn't be together, it might as well be when she needed to do something else. Wow, huh? You really playing up the doting wife card, huh? Is there something wrong with that? No, it's your choice. Listen, I'm going to put the plan on for the flyers here and you t and let you take care of it, okay? That suited Lizzie just fine, since while the other girl could no longer directly threaten John, she was still an eyesore. Lizzie scanned the list of locations for flyers and nodded to herself. A wide spread, even into town, but not too much of an inconvenience. Someone tried to stop her when she picked up all the flyers, something about being planned for several people, but Lizzie waved them off. Better to just do it herself. That's not proper teamwork, Lizzie. As she raced around to the locations, Lizzie tried to f enjoy the wind in her hair and the knowledge that she was making space for, her j for John to relax. Yet part of her mind was unsettled, part of her that hadn't existed before she had come to know him well. Being alone could be for good for John, but it could also be depressing. She had a difficult time telling which is what was which, but she became certain that something was wrong. Though she wanted to abandon the pointless activity, shred all the flyers herself, Lizzie finished distributing them so it wouldn't be a problem. Then she raced home. Just as she had feared, there was a sad look in his eyes. He wasn't as depressed as he had been before, just quietly doing his work, but her heart ached. Lizzie took care of him for the rest of the night, until he seemed better, then held him close, until he fell asleep. But though it was always peaceful, lying next to him, she had a feeling she would need to spend some time with her notebook soon. Though she tried to take on most of the work herself, John still wanted to get involved and had been insisting in indirect ways. She did her best to take on the majority of the work to ease his stress, though. Okay. Is that it? I could do more to help. You shouldn't feel obligated to help if you're feeling bad. That's kind of you, but I think you're already taking on too much. You don't need to carry everything. I can do some, too. Lizzie wanted to tell him it wasn't like that at all, that she loved helping him, but she couldn't put the words together. Probably because they'd be very untrue. Her instincts might lead her to say something bad, 
but analyzing her words took her to a very cold place that she didn't want to use with him. Yet she was already getting pulled into analysis of those two com competing drives. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about issues. Let's try killing you and leave her alive. Lizzie took a deep breath tried to focus on memories of John. It seemed so irrational to leave the girl alive, but she focused on him and pushed her way through. Barely. It took a supreme effort of will for Lizzie to hide her near outburst. The stupid girl hadn't noticed, but John would have, and answered calmly. It makes her place smell of our relationship. Quite the selection we got here. No way I've already seen this one. Hmm. Let's end the conversation and tell John all about it. When she arrived, she threw herself into John's arms and held him tightly. He looked concerned, and she and she hesitated for a moment before the words spilled out of her in a white-hot flood. She held nothing back, telling the story in a disjointed tangle of events, her emotions, what she wanted to do. John just held her and listened, not judging in the slightest. Being in his arms always calmed her, and soon Lizzie was closer to what others would consider normal. She didn't like being this way, happy and peaceful, and she could do more for John like this. It was an unintended side effect, and it stopped her from slaughtering anyone. John, thank you. I'm always here for you, Lizzie. As she regained clarity, she realized that he had added to his st stress to his life by doing this. Though she berated herself for it, Lizzie knew that he didn't mind helping her in this way. It doesn't make you angry to hear the things she said? It does, a little. Truth stings, doesn't it? But she probably just had a big head on, a big head after learning a couple new after learning new concepts in class and wants to use them on people. John is kind. Too kind. I'll always protect him, and I'm glad you do, Lizzie. But you don't need to hurt anyone to protect me, okay? Okay. She embraced him warmly, trying to pour affection into him instead of just receiving it. Part of her regret not holding back her thoughts, since it drained him a, li a little. But at least she knew that he would never judge her. Lucky you. Which is why I have to ask, is it really nothing? Is there a reason you've been more stressed lately? Is it like, is it things like the girl in your psych class? Okay, you sigh. Hmm. Let's try to explain the thoughts that went to the notebook. You mentioned the terrible girl from the psych class. The awful thing she said about us. Lizzie flipped to the page after that event had occurred. Pages, actually. She had forgotten how much she had written after that, though now it was crystal clear to her. After it happened, it felt... I felt, excuse me, everything. I hate her, John. I still wish I could get rid of her. But she won't, right? No. Writing it down. It captures what I'm feeling somehow. When I look over it again, I remember all the emotions. But there's some distance now. They're not as strong inside me. I think I get that. Maybe that's a healthy thing. Though I do that worry that sometimes you get yourself more worked up writing out your thoughts. But, that, but it doesn't have to be writing, John. I get the same effect from talking to you. It's better that way. 
Not just because I'm talking to you, but because you always have new thoughts and interesting things to say. And so sometimes I think about things differently. I'm glad to hear that. I'm always here to talk, Lizzie. I know, I know. It's wonderful. But I don't have to share everything, do I? Sometimes what I'm thinking is just silly and it doesn't matter. I don't want to waste your time. He considered that very seriously. Then pulled her a little, a little closer up a smile. You can tell me anything at all, Lizzie. But I don't, but don't feel obligated. Unless you don't have a working brain, everyone has tons of minor thoughts. Should, they just pass through your mind. They don't matter unless you focus on them. I mean, I have a lot of, whoops. I have a lot of little dumb little thoughts. There's no point sharing. That's not true. I'd love to see every single thought you ever think. No, you wouldn't. I believe you. But since that's not the world we live in, we can just talk to each other, okay? She eagerly nodded and pressed herself against him even closer. She was right to talk to him. John had always good things to say. Okay, we've got our skip function here. To her surprise, the energy overflowed so much that she even enjoyed the party a little. She kept an eye on John at all times, noting his position. He was speaking with a mixed group, casual but not so casual that she worried about him. Since he was fine, she, uh, she didn't mind spending time with others. Aaron's friends were usually smart and thoughtful, if a little too passionate about irreverent things for her liking. Okay. That was fine with her, though she began to wonder if she could collect John and leave. The company, Lizzie, the company didn't seem to have worn, worn him down yet, so perhaps they could stay a little longer. While Lizzie considered that, someone else ambled up beside her. Enjoying yourself, Lizzie. Hello, Aaron. And there he goes with that pose of his. Uh, let's try to train. Confront John about it. Damn it. I'm gonna try and, uh, do what I did the first time again, and just try to make all, choose all the options here that look like as though they'd be the morally correct ones. Well, for Lizzie, anyway. So, let's let it go. Um, okay. Let's explain fully. Make dinner. Why not? Let's ignore everyone and look for John. Though many options present themselves to her, Lizzie decided to take the simplest. Best to be prepared, but not to do anything that might disturb John. That left her feeling a little more confident in herself, but Lizzie still searched for his voice in the crowd and focused on him. Not sure if I made a right decision here, but... Well, I'll figure it out eventually. All the right choices I gotta make. It's just process of elimination at this point. There he was. Oh, I can skip this. Um, did I ever take your idea? Your ideas sound fun, John. Let's do that. Seriously? This stuff is heavy. You're going to end up making him do all the work. He, <laughs> I can provide moral support. The girl rolled her eyes at them, but didn't try to interfere any further. After signing up and getting the appropriate key, I left John, Lizzie and John to head to the supply room he'd referenced. In the old art building, they head down to one of the lesser used hallways. Her arm still linked with his. 
Being alone together in a place like this brought lovely ideas to mind. But since they were helping a cause that mattered to him, Lizzie restrained herself. Before too long, they reached the room, which John unlocked. The room inside was reasonably large, but filled with years of ancient desks, cabinets, and other furniture, not to mention a host of random boxes. Nobody wanted this job because these old cabinets are ridiculously heavy. I'm guessing that won't be a problem, though. Lizzie stepped over to one of them and pressed her hand against the side, tipping it experimentally. The metal groaned and dust fell from the cabinet, but it didn't feel particularly heavy. There's nobody watching, right? Nah, people don't usually come in here. We're only using it because most of the real meeting rooms are booked that night. Then I'll take care of it, no problem. They have a recycling guy coming for the metal, so we just need to take them back out back. Nodding, Lizzie moved to the cabinet that was the most in the way of the others and picked it up without difficulty. A box that had been had a box that had been set on top of it tilted to the side, and John snagged it before it could fall. Smiling that thanks at him, Lizzie carried the cabinet out the door he had referenced and left it at the edge of the back lot. You better hope nobody sees, otherwise you're probably going to scare somebody. Being made of metal, it was indeed heavier than average, but not really a challenge for her strength. They soon found a good rhythm working together, which made Lizzie glow inside. She, ha uh, she handled all the heaviest furniture while John organized the rest and cleared off boxes and other materials that would get in her way. Her strength hadn't been something she'd ever given much thought, when she was growing up. First something to be hidden to avoid attention, then an advantage to be cultivated. It had never been something that brought her any joy. They had cha that had changed, the day she had saved him from falling. Since then, she had realized that she could use it to protect him. There had, there had really only been a few brief moments where she had used her strength to its full potential, but she was just as happy for simple things like this as well. The two of them, working to move so many things, it reminded her of when they moved into their apartment together, and that made her imagine them, them moving to an actual home of their, her own, which was a wonderful thought. She would be overjoyed for that, no matter the circumstances but it would be most wonderful if it happened after they were married. Their tradition seemed meaningless to her in isolation, but the idea of doing it with John. Such thoughts carried Lizzie happily through the rest of their work, made her frequently smile over at John. And he smiled back, seeming much lighter than she had seen him in recent days. Lizzie didn't even mind that they were preparing for Francesca to come speak. Working toward it together with him, it didn't seem like such a bad thing after all. John, can you help me with these? Hmm? The desks are the desks excuse me. The desks are too long for one person to carry. Not without damaging something. Oh, so that's why you've been skipping them. Sure, I'll try. He acted as though he might not be able to help, but of course he came to assist her. And it really was true that she needed his help. She would have wanted him to feel she wouldn't have wanted him to feel condescended to. As strong she as she was, there was just no good way to carry a desk alone. Between the two of them, it was no trouble at all to move the desks and finish clearing the room. Plus, she got to watch him on the other side of the desk. He 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 was used to her he was used to her gaze and didn't mind it though he needed to focus on their path more than she did to avoid running into things. When at last they finished, the room was still dusty and stuffy, but at least it was empty. More time had passed than she had expected. John didn't seem as surprised, but she was glad to see the slight smile on his face. It's not much, but we did our, par our part to help. It wasn't a problem for you, was it? Not at all, John. Thanks for thinking of this. 
Having said that, I'm definitely ready to head home. Me too. Though they were both a little dusty, Lizzie didn't hesitate to link her arm with his and lean against him as they walked home. Getting cleaned up together might be fun. Well, that went by rather swimmingly. She spent a while writing her notebook, many of its pages now heavy with ink. Though she wasn't a very good artist, she found it soothing to draw John's face. Perhaps that would be something to take up in the future. Okay, Lizzie trusted, trusted completely that whatever he was working on was important, but she could also see that he was getting, getting tired. John always tried to push himself too far, letting his energy run down and often leading him to become depressed again. Smiling to herself, Lizzie straightened. The library was empty. Maybe he needed something a little different. Well, I do have adult content disabled, so maybe this will be fine. Let's have some fun. Lizzie smiled and approached him, making sure to make enough noise for him to hear. She wished that she was wearing something sexier than sweatpants and a t-shirt, but it would be fine. John looked up and smiled. Oh, glad to see you. Nothing to do at home either, huh? I did everything already. You don't seem too busy either. She shifted her posture, leaning on his desk and arching her back toward him strategically. Her smile shifted from pure happiness to pure desire. The effect was not lost on him. Wow, you look great. But, uh, I am supposed to be working right now. You're supposed to help people who come into the library, right? I'm the only one who needs something right now. <laughs> She's kind of got you there. Achievement unlocked. Library fun. They cleaned up and put their, pulled their clothes back on in a hurry. I guess it already happened. Then head back to the main desk. Anyone who saw them... Bodies flushed, clothes askew, would have known exactly what they had done. And that fact made Lizzie immensely happy. There was no one there, of course. The library was every bit as empty as it had been before. She had expected John to look relieved, but he actually didn't seem to care, just smiling at her. Do you want to stick around? I wasn't getting much done anyway. Sure. She spent the rest of his shift alongside him, occasionally reading, but often just leaning against him and breathing his scent. She could still smell what they had done, and it was a wonderful reminder. Also wonderful was, the tension, was that the tension seemed to have eased from him. Being together had been exactly what he needed, making Lizzie doubly glad that she had given in. I'm personally glad that I was able to get that achievement without having. I was glad I was able to get that achievement as quickly as I did. When the shift finally ended, John locked up and they headed home together. As they walked, Lizzie was surprised to feel his hand slide down from her waist, car caressing her curves. Maybe they weren't done after all. Lizzie eagerly pulled him home faster. Okay, that's that. Since their time together clearing out the room had gone well, they kept participating together. It hadn't been all as much fun as that, but Lizzie didn't mind the time preparing, and John seemed positively engaged by all of it. But when she came from class, home from class one day, she realized that she might have gone entirely wrong. John slumped on the couch, too unfocused to notice her. There was an emptiness in his eyes that she hadn't seen some... T okay, I can skip this. Oh. I haven't been pushing you too much, have I? It was so much fun when we worked together before, so... No, I didn't mean that at all. There's just so much to do. I know you want to help, but you know your limits, right? You can't help others if you're not okay. You're right. Thanks, Lizzie. Lizzie thought that their conversation had gone well, but she was plagued by doubt. 
She had noticed this depressing depression incoming, hadn't been able to prevent it. She began going over every interaction in minute detail, wondering where she had neglected something. I don't think I neglected anything, but what do I know? Let's talk about issues. Though John didn't have much energy to spare, he was always willing to listen. He replied quietly, taking her problems seriously and helping her get through them. When he was depressed, John could be very irrational, but otherwise, he was so calm and level-headed. She hoped that, that being in that mode with her would help him feel a little better. When they went to bed, he held her gently, stroking her hair as she let her tension melt away. Okay, let's not kill you. Sending up a conversation. Tell John all about it. I'm always here for you, Lizzie. Okay, that was different. Uh, maybe ask him to help. Only then did Lizzie realize that she had her knife in hand. She had a strong instinct to shield John, defend him from the girl. She managed to restrain herself and set the knife aside, a few inches out of reach. You okay, Lizzie? I'll be fine, but we need to keep watching. Reflecting on her reactions, Lizzie scooted up against John and focused on the broadcast. As she calmed down, Lizzie was able to admit that any real threat would likely be slower and social. Her calm also let her notice John's mood more precisely. The news was hitting him hard. He was always more prone to sadness, and no doubt his thoughts were drifting in a very unpleasant direction. Lizzie pulled him closer to her and wrapped her arms around his head, holding him close. You don't have to worry, John. I'll protect you. We can get through whatever happens together. I know. You're right. But it feels easier to believe that here, here with you. He relaxed against her, and Lizzie's heart sang. There might be some shadows in his mind that he needed to deal with, but every moment she could hold him up was a glorious one. She kept holding him, twined his hair gently. Hmm. I think I'm gonna go with forgetting about it for now. Because I'm assuming, with the assumption that we'll just address it later. John's sadness seemed to ease at, as he spent time with her, and she was glad to see it. Though part of her desperately wanted more information, she reminded herself that what she had said was true. This incident was about them, so she would learn more in time. Okay, yeah, that's exactly it. So there he's later, okay. She made her way across campus at speed towards the lab, and to her surprise, she wasn't anxious. John was having fun. He would ex he'd be happy to see her, and things would be fine. There was no threat, not here. Okay, you're having your little uh, LAN party again. Hmm. Let's ask you about it. Lizzie gripped her knife and firmly set aside all her doubts. Her John would never do anything to hurt her. She got up and began preparing dinner for them, though her knife moved a little more forcefully than necessary. When she finally heard his footsteps, Lizzie eagerly dropped her knife and ran to fling the door open. Welcome home, John. Hi, you're in a good mood. She pulled him inside and into her embrace, which he returned warmly. Once they had the door closed behind him, though, Lizzie let some of her concern show. John, I hope this is just a silly fear, but I wanted to talk to you about it. Do we have some kind of financial problem? You know you, can, you could share anything to me, right? 
His eyes widened. Then he gave a rueful smile. God, I'm sorry. I was planning to have a happy surprise for you, but I guess I should have known you might get worried over it. A surprise? The money from all the extra shifts. It's for a surprise? I've been saving funds for our wedding. Her heart soared. She had been right to trust him. Absolutely right. Though she didn't understand why he had kept it a secret, she was certain that he would explain, and of course her John would have a good explanation. Oh, oh John, that's wonderful. John moved further in and sat down, drawing her with him onto the couch. After all the unnecessary tension dragging her down, now she was elated. Though she gave John a huge smile, the way his eyes lingered on hers suggested the tension was vis visible on her face. I've been planning this for quite a while. After high school, you were nervous a wedding would go wrong somehow, so I didn't try then. Okay, this looks the same. Decent amount. Wait, let me hold you longer first. Lizzie threw herself at him cheerfully, and he was glad to hold her. She nestled against his chest, imagining her wedding. Okay. John took a deep breath, but his eyes were still calm. Lizzie nestled against him to offer comfort, but she knew that they couldn't change the facts of the situation. It sounds like they're reducing the requirements to move drugs through testing. Okay, this is the same. I hate them, John. I hate them so much. Wish I could get rid of them, but... Did I just enable this thing? Okay, let's keep auto off. She gripped her knife tightly, but knew it wouldn't do any good. John nodded in understanding and leaned his head against hers. I know, but they rushed it through on the surge of popular appeal and it's already done. Do you think they'll do widespread testing? That at least got a slight smile from him, but the situation was obviously quite serious. It could be worse. It's not like society is going to change overnight. After all, the war on this incident is still on everyone's mind, but they'll move on eventually. Does this change what you want to do? Should we do something different? No, I think we, are, we have to keep going as we have. Finish college. Then we can build our life together. He reached out to take her hand and she gripped it back hard. I think I've seen enough for now. I don't know. I feel like I keep I need to keep watching, but at this point it's just depressing me. I'll watch for you. You rest, John. I'll tell you if you say anything important happens. Are you sure? I don't want I don't want to make you shoulder it either. No, I'm happy to. The news might be bad, but I don't mind if I'm helping you feel better. I'll take you up on that. Thanks, Lizzie. She helped him she helped tuck him into bed, kissed his forehead, and then head back to watch late into the night. By next morning, Lizzie was feeling discouraged. Not just about the situation, but about the reactions to it. Everyone was so stupid. There were protests in support of the law and protests against it. More protests that didn't seem clear on what they wanted except change. It was utter chaos, and yet the direction of all of it seemed to be downward. There was so much attention on everything, so little bit rational. According to reports, some schools had even expelled students based on the idea that they might be a threat even though they had no true grounds to do so. Lawsuits had already begun. All of it seemed far away from their home and their life together, yet it loomed high and cast a shadow over her. She was grateful when she heard John finally getting up. He came out and gave her a quick kiss before sitting down beside her. She explained the basics of everything that had been reported and putting it into words made things seem slightly more manageable, but it was still far from pleasant. John, 
Do you think we need to call off the wedding? He looked into her eyes seriously for a long moment, not judging, just understanding. Eventually he spoke quietly. Would you prefer that? No. I'm just... Something might happen. I don't think there's any real risk, but I don't want you to be unhappy, Lizzie. I want our wedding day to be something you can remember forever, so now is a bad time. I think... I think it would be better to do it. To prove that Koitek doesn't dominate our wives anymore. It would make me happy, John. So happy. She stared into his eyes and realized that she was certain. She wanted nothing more than to spend the rest of her life with him. But she was afraid that someone would take him away somehow. Afraid of so many things. Will you tell me everything will be alright, John? I... I can't promise that. But I don't think there's any serious chance of something going wrong. She smiled fondly through moist eyes and nestled closer against him. I'm glad you said that. You don't offer any false hope. I don't want you to be sad, but I'm glad you never try to force things to be happy. That's... Thank you? Please convince me, John. Tell me everything... Tell me about everything why we can have our wedding and I don't need to be afraid. John held her and began to speak, not making any grand promises, just but just going over the situation. It all seemed so much clearer when he said it compared to the chaos of possibilities within her mind. Yes, things wouldn't be perfect. Yes, there would be problems in their future. But with him by her side, Lizzie could hope that things would turn out well. All she needed to do was... Trust him. Let's go with uh, lowercase h. Lizzie held her John, and he held her. They would always have each other. Finding peace again, Lizzie gradually fell asleep in his arms. Holy shit, I think I might actually be on the path to the ending. Look at that. At long last, it was time for their special day. After all of their preparation, it somehow felt simultaneously as if it couldn't be happening already, and as if she had been waiting forever. Soon they would belong to each other in another way. And yet, you're dressed casually. Most of her concerns about something happening to some some interrupted wedding had faded away. Though most obvious though obviously she had brought her axe. But with John's calmness balancing her, she felt as though things would be fine. Arriving at the location they picked out made it all seem so much more real. She'd seen the pictures, but actually standing on the grounds was an entirely different experience. The garden at the area at the edge of town did a lot of weddings, and it was certainly beautiful. High hedge walls made the garden seem separate from the rest of the world, and even the offices were picturesque. Though Lizzie wanted to go see the actual area where they would be married first, apparently things were still being rearranged following the wedding before them. Instead, they headed into the offices to do a little paperwork, which Lizzie got out of the way as fast as possible to focus on what mattered. After that, they had to part, going in separate directions to get dressed. Lizzie held her dress tightly as she was directed to one of the side rooms. She had tried it on a few times, but John had actually never seen her wearing it. No dawdling, get in there. He... Why do all why do all the girls look the same? Honestly. Like, are we sure that we didn't move into a town of clones? An irritatingly young woman gestured for Lizzie to come. At first, Lizzie was angry about her presence, but she knew that, wasn't, that it wasn't easy to get everything on her dress done properly on her own. 
Reluctantly accepting the necessity, Lizzie got fully dressed. Seeing herself in the mirror, she was quite pleased with the effect. The positive feelings were only slightly dampened by the assistant making comments about her. They were compliments, but Lizzie didn't care about her. She only won compliments from John. Unfortunately, the time it took for her to put on her dress wasn't long enough for the garden to be ready. The assistant left, leaving Lizzie to pace idly. She considered getting out her axe to see how she would look with it. Yeah, there's an idea. Instead of bringing a bouquet, bring the axe. She had a feeling that she would go that she would like the look. Hopefully John would like it too. That would bring to mind naughty ideas that made Lizzie giggle to herself. What? Murder all the guests? Sooner than she had expected, the assistants returned. Now? Not yet, sorry. How much longer will it be? Sorry. The previous ceremony went long. Just as soon as everything's cleaned up, you'll be able to step right in. I see. I'll go talk to John then. What? You can't let him see you before the wedding. I was just gonna say, it's tradition to... Yeah, you, you're not supposed to see each other before the wedding. It's bad luck, I hear. Lizzie considered that tradition for a moment and decided that it was dumb. But the other woman seemed very serious about it, as if such superstitions made all the difference. Well, it is her job, so keep that in mind. Why not? It's bad luck. Yeah, see, I was right. You don't have to get you don't want to get your your married life started on the wrong foot, do you? Lizzie scowled, trying to weigh the factors in her mind. She doubted that John would care about such things. But maybe it was best not to make waves. Go away. I beg your pardon? I can wait alone. Go away. The woman left in a huff, which Lizzie, which left Lizzie to wait on her own. There, I felt slightly better. You have to be rude. I mean, she was just doing her job. She drew her axe from its hiding place and just held it, letting the familiar feeling in her hands calm her nervousness. Not just nervousness that something terrible might somehow happen but nervousness about the fact that they were so close to finally being married. She had dreamed about this moment for such a long time. Being close to it almost didn't feel real. Lizzie paced around the room a little to burn off nervous energy. She caught a glimpse of herself in the mirror, eyes wild and carrying an axe. She could imagine how most men might view her, and she knew exactly how John would see her. Coming pleasantly to herself, Lizzie hid away her axe and waited for the wedding to start. It was finally time. Lizzie stepped from the door and into the back garden, where there was a pathway of short grass lined with flowers. Normally there would be chairs filled with guests, but in their, in their case it was empty. She let her eyes wander forward wanted to drink it all in before she fully indulged. At the end of the pathway was an archway woven with white roses. The scene wasn't, wasn't marred by many people. Only a pastor and a photographer. Necessary evils. And then... And there was John, completing the image. Well, don't you look presentable. It was the first time she had seen him in the suit, and he looked good. More importantly, the moment he saw her, his eyes were filled with love, with a love that nearly broke her heart. It took all her self-control not to run down the walkway toward him. She made herself walk slowly, savoring the moments until she finally drew beside him. They stood in front of the pastor, but she barely saw the other man. They had spent a long time talking about their vows, but in, the end, but in the end they had gone with none. There was nothing they could say now that would match everything they had already promised one another. I guess you're right about that, aren't you? Besides, she doubted the pastor would appreciate her saying how many people she would happily murder for John's sake. 
I'm pretty sure the vast majority of people would anyway, so yeah, better for you to keep your mouth shut. With the ceremony simplified, it didn't take long. She ignored the words buzzing in the back of her mind, just staring at John until she heard the words that mattered. Do you, John Nichols, take Lizzie Doss to be your lawfully wedded life? I almost said awfully wedded, but honestly, that would be a better description. I do. Do you, Lizzie Doss, take John Nichols to be your lawfully wedded husband? I do! Before the pastor could say anything about kissing the bride, Lizzie threw herself at John, wrapping her, her arms around his neck and kissing him fiercely. In that moment, everything fell away, except the two of them. Nothing else mattered. She pulled away, she pulled back just slightly, staring into his eyes. She saw the past pain and sorrow there, yes but she also saw hope and determination. She saw a love that matched her own. When they moved apart, she took his arm for the sake of the pictures, but those no longer mattered. When planning the wedding, Lizzie had thought that capturing this moment would have been an important part of the experience. Now, she saw that it didn't matter at all. A picture could never compare to the fact that she would always have this moment always have him forever true ending and look we got the perfect picture now yeah I'm assuming the blanked out squares here are for the uh adult only scenes so there's probably going to be at least two okay here's what I'm going to do I'm going to try to get that last achievement off screen because assuming I'm right and it has something to do with the uh, adult content then obviously I don't want to show that on screen. So, BRB. Okay, paused. I'm going for a walk, is that okay? Something different. I'll get close to any of the workers. Knowing her, Lizzie headed out. The rounds are fairly pleasant. She was glad they picked this location, but her purpose was not to go for a walk. Once, they got, once she got out of eyesight, Lizzie circled back and made her way around to the main building. Before they'd been split up, she obviously noted exactly where they'd taken John the wait. Com comparing it to the map she looked up of the building, she could easily determine where his room met the outside wall. Though she didn't see anyone until she saw him through the window, John was alone, sitting in a room much like hers. Though he looked mostly calm, he could see the tension in his hands as he clasped them together. No doubt he was nervous about this too, and given her fears about this day, Lizzie had probably to add two of them, but she, but she planned to reverse that trend very soon. Just not quite yet. Instead, she stayed outside the window, staring at him, just like she used to. The next time, she'd be staring at her husband. Lizzie was sure that her smile had become something that was not comforting the most, but it didn't matter. She knocked on the glass and John jumped a little, whirling to look at her. But when he saw her, he immediately smiled. After checking the window a bit, he managed to open it. Everything okay, Lizzie? Everything's fine. It was just an awful woman saying boring things and I got tired of it. Before she could object, she pulled herself through the window. Normally it would have been effortless, but the dress made things a little bit more difficult. Fortunately, John offered her his hand and she was able to get in somewhat gracefully. They say it's bad luck to see the bride before the wedding. She walked past him and locked the door to the, to the room. But I think that only applies to normal people, and I think this is probably where I should cut out the scene again. 
brushing past against him, Lizzie tw lowered the blinds to cover the windows completely, then turned, then turned to him with a smile. Would you like to see the bride? Yep, definitely need to cut this out now. Yeah, I uh, guess this was uh, Crimson Gray, Dusk and Dawn. I'll be honest, I was disappointed with this one. It just seems like for it just seems like it was just nothing but just trying to keep Lizzie Lizzie's homicidal urges uh, toned down and stable for the most for, for a good chunk of the game, and then some stuff involving uh, some murders going on in our town, big pharma, koi tech, all that stuff was happening behind you know behind the scenes and everything, occasionally uh, making itself known to uh, John and Lizzie, but well playing through the entire game all the way up to until the end, it didn't really amount to anything. Unless there is going to be yet another sequel to Crimson Grey in the future, which might explore uh, those story arcs further. But even if that is the case, to tell you the truth, I am not sure if I'd honestly really care all that much if another uh, game, if another Crimson Grey game was made. Which kind of it serves as a perfect segue into what I want to talk about next. I... I don't know why. Actually, maybe I do have an idea why, but, um... I just... wasn't really all that vested in the story of this game or its characters at all. Especially, uh, John and Lizzie. I mean... And I think it has to do with the fact here that I'm still relatively fresh off the, the events of the first Crimson Grey where I had some reason to care about at least John with, you know, having, you know, a, cr a crazy murderous psycho tailing him throughout an entire game and all that, but as soon as he basically just decided to say fuck it and then just enter a relationship with her after everything that happened with the whole Koitek conspiracy and all that, just accepting her madness as well as some form of zone and just you know, being perfectly, just gr learning to be perfectly okay, okay, happy with a uh, mass murdering psycho as a lover, then, well, I don't know. I don't know about you, but at that point, I just found it next to impossible to really care about what happened to the guy. Or Lizzie, for that matter. I mean, yeah, I, I can understand that, you know, in Lizzie's case here, she couldn't really help how she was born, but even so, she's still very much a danger to other people around her, as two games now at this point have demonstrated to me. And yet, especially in the case, of, and yet I was supposed to essentially root for uh, root for her, especially in the second game. And I'm like, I'm sorry, but she's not a person I can root for. She's nuts. She's homicidal. She's overly paranoid to a ridiculous degree. Like, holy shit. Freaking wonder that she didn't that she didn't go on a ma on a, on a freaking mass murdering spree at, at some point earlier in her life. How unstable she is. But yeah, and then of course there was also the fact that li I couldn't really care all that much about literally every other side character in the game, especially because they all look the same. Like I don't know, maybe maybe the maybe the uh, development team or artists or whatever just decide to reuse character sprites and assets for different characters. But I mean, when every other character except the main characters, with the exception of that one girl that appeared in that CG art during that murdering incident in Warnos, with with her being the only notable exception, I found it difficult to really care about anybody about. Anybody that showed up here outside of a well, I don't know who you are, but I hope you don't piss off Lizzie enough here to get brutally murdered by her, because well, nobody deserves to get murdered by Lizzie. Yeah, but yeah, beyond that, I I, I couldn't really care all that much about everybody, because again, they all looked the same. They didn't really have much of an impact at all in in regards to you know the story itself here, the relationships with John or Lizzie or any or. Both of them even didn't really ha hold that much weight compared to, well, you know, John and Lizzie's relationship itself here and their occasional fears regarding Koitek and the other big pharma companies. 
it's just I guess outside of those two main arcs nothing felt like it actually mattered any of it really none of the none of the other character none of the other characters none of the other side arc story arcs anything it was all just fluff it was just there and that just made it even more hard for me to get invested in the story of this game I mean, like two episodes. I mean, it was around the time that I was in the second episode, and where I started to ask myself, "Do I actually care what happens to these people?" Because by that point, I was because you know, by that point, I was already just finding it difficult to really care because of all these factors I mentioned. And, I, and again, I guess the biggest problem is because I can't really be all that invested in the main characters themselves, that being of John and Lizzie. Because by the by the end of the first game, I just lost any and all sympathy I had for John. And Lizzie, I never really had too much sympathy for her anyway. Just more fear, uh, for more fear towards her than anything. just yeah, I don't know I, I just think there's just too many things about how this how Dusk and Dawn was structured along with the characters that I was put in charge of basically that I had to watch interact with etc etc that just made it next to impossible for me to really care all that much about what was going on and I know I'm starting to sound like a broken record at this point so I think I'm just gonna go ahead and just Shut up now. I, I think I've said everything that I honestly really need to say. Like I said before, if there's a, if there's going to be another Crimson Grey game where maybe it will address some of the uh, loose thread loose threads that this game left, maybe someday I'll check it out if it ever comes to pass. If it doesn't, then I guess it won't really be that much of a loss to me by that point because, well, as I've just been spending the past six minutes talking about I find it I'm finding it difficult to really get all that invested in the, the characters of John and Lizzie at this point so even if another game did come out would I honestly care enough by that point to really want to come back to this story to these characters if you know I never really cared too much about you know the main attractions here as it were I, I honestly don't know Maybe give maybe give it a year. Maybe give it some time, like maybe a few years or so. However long it, it takes for a new game, if a new game is ever made to come out, maybe maybe time will make make me soften up a bit here to where I would be willing to give a continue another continuation, another shot. But for now, I just can't really be bothered. I just don't. I know this might sound a bit harsh, but. I just don't care what happens to these people. To tell you the truth, I think the end. I think the true ending of the first game was more or less already a per perfect conclusion to their story. Anyway, this was just not quite filler, I guess, but it was dangerously close to it for me. Like it, it didn't really feel all that necessary. Because, again, whatever other bigger story arcs that it introduced here besides, you know, a relationship with these two that they've already more or less concluded the first game, all those other story arcs were just kind of left hanging here at this game. So, it just, it's difficult for me not to feel like as though I've kind of wasted my time a little bit at this game. It's far from, I mean, I'm not saying it's a straight bad game just not for me I guess because I just find find it difficult to really get invested anymore at this point anyway I'm gonna I'm just gonna sh I'm gonna shut up now before I continue going on and on and on like a broken record you know I said I would stop I would shut up now here I am still talking so I'm zipping it I don't know. Maybe you guys enjoyed. Uh, maybe you guys enjoyed uh, this let's play of Crimson Grey: Dusk and Dawn. I hope you guys 
or at least got at least a little bit of enjoyment out of it, even if you didn't enjoy the whole thing through. I mean, I don't really, I wouldn't really fault any of you if some of you just felt similarly like I do, especially if you could just tell that I felt, like, I don't know, maybe you guys could tell that I was finding it a bit difficult to get really all that invested, and well, I feel bad about that, that, you know, you guys had to just, that some of you probably just sat through just me sitting, essentially sitting here and then just trudging along to get to the ending, and I mean, that can't exactly be a very fun experience to sit through. And I am sorry about that, if that's the case, if, if you felt that way. But, I mean, if you want to stick around and check out any of my other content, you, if you want to subscribe to my channel and whatnot, maybe you can find some other stuff on my, on my channels that maybe you'll find more entertaining, or at least I hope you, you could. Otherwise, well, it is what it is, I guess. So, yeah, this, as I said before, this has been Crimson Grey, Dusk and Dawn. I'm going to go ahead and just end the video here. If you, like I said, if you enjoyed it, I'm gl if you enjoyed this Let's Play, or at least any parts of it, I'm glad. If not, that's okay, too. I'm going to... No, I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to end the video here. I'm just... Yeah, I'm, I'm stopping the video. I'm, I'm just rambling at this point. I hope you all have a great day. I will see you guys for the next series I'm going to do. If any of you watching this are going to choose to, to uh, stick around. I will see you guys then. Have a great day and take care.